So, um, yeah. So, just like any other country during the beginning and the height of the, the pandemic, misinformation related to COVID um, consisted of a lot of disinformation and misinformation about the pandemic uh, propagated by various sources. Some came from other countries like the U.S., like France. Um, some started in the Philippines. And I will be sharing one particular example that came from the Philippines. Um, as we know, misinformation is um, false or misleading content shared without harmful intent. And disinformation, on the other hand, assumes um, intent. And just as a reminder, um, early in 2020, when most of the world was not yet affected by the pandemic and the virus was still called um, NCOV 2019, Many news outlets already started covering it. And this is a tweet I did in January 2020 um, on the contagiousness and transmi transmissibility of the virus. Uh, this was picked up by several media outlets. And, um, and this is how I sort of started being more interested in, in, in the virus. But actually, this is the video that really made me um, more involved. With, with COVID. And this is um, a, a video that became viral featuring a Nobel laureate, uh, Luc Montagnier. Um, he was a French virologist and together with uh, Francoise barre sinossi and Harold Zurhausen, they received the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 2008. Um, and in this video, he claimed that the use of vaccines for COVID was going to cause antibody dependent enhancement or ADE um, and would cause vaccinated individuals to suffer more strongly and die within two years. Um, and as you, you know, most of us have been vaccinated and we're still not dead after two years. So, but this, this was a clip that was shared with me dozens of times. So I, I wrote something on Facebook about this and that made me become more involved with the mainstream media in the Philippines um, with, with interviews um, to start clarifying misinformation and fake news. And in, in terms of what the fake news uh, being shared in the Philippines was, we had a lot. So these are some of the examples of misinformation in the Philippines. Some of them are about um, the origin of, of SARS-CoV-2. Some of them talk about cures. Some of them talk about um, the vaccines. Um, and um, so what the Department of Health of the Philippines did was from the beginning, they started advising people, of course, right, um, against spreading misinformation and unverified claims about COVID, about the pandemic, about the virus. But of course, it was not enough. So um, the, the role of the Department of Health evolved and included coordination, resourcing, and strategy. Um, this is a busy slide, but don't worry, you will get a copy of this. Um, and basically what I, I wanna show here is that um, the COVID infodemic response task force um, was really composed of several government agencies working with the WHO, with UNICEF, um, with the media, with academia and um, with the Department of Health, the DOH as the lead. And like the presentation of Santi earlier, it was really about uh, building trust um, and, and really trying to tell people that we are um, the trusted sources when it comes to these things. Um, and these are the four pillars of, of the task force. So one, you will see that um, the first one is working relationships across different sectors. The second one is data analytics, social media monitoring. And this is also similar to what Basi just uh, presented about um, social media listening and looking at what people are talking about on the different social media platforms. Um, it's also called community listening. And the third one is uh, evidence-based interventions and fact-based messages. So as many of you have seen in your countries probably what what usually happens is when there is uh, misinformation you create materials to answer or, or debunk those claims but the other added complexity i would say or challenge in the philippines was that uh, there are over a hundred dialects in the philippines and of course you cannot create materials for all of those but the top eight eight or nine major uh, major dialects 
you, you have to translate these materials to those top eight or nine uh, dialects so that people can understand and share within their communities. And the fourth pillar here that you will see is uh, reporting and response, which means that whatever is seen on the ground is reported to the central um, team and um, the appropriate response is formulated. So the next slide is a, a summary of the situation before and after the infodemic management uh, for, for, for COVID. So as you will see here, before COVID, uh, the infodemic management system was um, arbitrary and there are really no criteria for screening and it was so social media listening was not really done or maybe it was done but not on a regular basis but that really changed with uh, the infodemic management in, in during the covid times because then um the infodemic management became more centrally led by the department of health it was really coordinated and there were frequent meetings um, and all the finished communication materials were cascaded to the regional and the local departments of health offices, the media, the partners, and of course, social media influencers, because as, as you have also experienced in your countries, social media influencers are very um, influential um, these days. And this is an example of, of the misinformation that really started in the Philippines or was a local misinformation. Um, this started in Cebu. Um, Cebu is the sixth most populated city in, in the country and the most populous city in the center, in, in, in the center of the country. Um, the, the provincial government in Cebu encouraged the employees to practice, uh, uh, practice steam inhalation, known, also known as tuob. Uh, that's the local term for it. It's a way to fight COVID. Um, the practice of steam inhalation is a com common practice um, as a home remedy for cough um, and colds, but is really not approved for, for, for COVID, to cure COVID, right? So what happened during this time was that the WHO, a local WHO in the Philippines, the Department of Health, um, UNICEF, and, and other partners really put out a, a message um, to say that extremely heat, extremely hot steam can be harmful and there is a risk of um, burn injury. And um, they, they had to put out the statement to say that there is no recommend, uh, recommended treatment or vaccine during that time to prevent COVID. Um, but um, people started uh, still using Tuob as a, um, a method to help them with their symptoms. Of course, as we know, this can help with symptoms, but it is not a, uh, a method that could cure, treat the virus, or um, stop the virus from infecting you. Um, fortunately, there were no major burn cases or um, issues that came out of this, but this is uh, an example of how... Um, misinformation can spread really fast, especially during the time when we didn't have vaccines or um, all these antivirals that we now have um, at the moment. And this is these are just some of the examples of the media briefings we had um, on top. That was uh, for the Foreign Correspondents Association in the Philippines. Um, um, and the, the, the other person there with me is the, the governor of the province of Sorsogon. He was also a, a senator previously. Um, below that is one that we had with the Philippine Embassy in Hong Kong and uh, Hong Kong News together with the Consul General. And this was really uh, very interesting because uh, many of our fellow country men in Hong Kong are working there as domestic helpers. Um, and they, the, and, and they, of course, were, were very interested to know more about COVID, and they were scared for their families back home. But they were also more scared because they were in Hong Kong and they were near China. And of course, um, COVID re re really uh, became big in China before it spread all over the world, right? So it was something that we did to help them to help answer their questions and their concerns about um, um, about the virus. And then on, on the right, you will see that this is um, a, an event that we had with uh, the Philippine Star. It's um, one of the two major um, newspapers in, in the Philippines. 
Um, this we did together with two of my, my mentors and professors from the University of the Philippines. And, and again, the focus here was really uh, collaboration um, of the information campaigns with trusted sources using both mainstream media and, um, and social media. And, and really to summarize what I, I just discussed, I think it really boils down to education, um, uh, the importance of prioritizing rumors to address because there's so many rumors out there, you cannot uh, address everything, but it's important to, um, to prioritize the most important ones. And this you will know when you listen to the community. So the importance of social media listening, looking at what people uh, post on social media platforms, looking at what people are talking about in the communities. It's also important to have consistent, clear, and easily shareable materials that are translated um, to the different dialects and languages so that people can understand. Um, it's important to work with partners because the more people are helping you, uh, the more people are involved, um, the, the, the more people you can reach with what you are doing and with your information campaign. It's also important to be uh, proactive rather than reactive. Um, this was also covered by uh, Santi and Dirga earlier um, that it's important to pre-bunk before um, the, these false information come out. It's important to say, to explain to people that this is the, these are the facts and you might hear otherwise, but these are not true. And also last but not the least, um, the, the importance of using trusted sources. Um, as you know, the world is uh, more polarized than ever um, because of politics, because of difference in opinions. But um, when we have um, a, a major event like a global pandemic, it's important for people to come together and, and really work together to educate um, the public so that we could um, have the right information out there. And so this is my last slide. Uh, Thank you very much again for, for, for your attention and uh, happy to answer questions later.